Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to give you some thoughts on the Olympus TG6 camera. I've really been a point and shoot camera on steroids diver for some time, beginning with the disc camera and Ike like housing that came out in the 1980s. I've also used the Nikonis system and more recently a GoPro, but I never really felt like I was ready to make the financial leap into a DSLR with a housing. I simply don't destination dive enough. Um, and when I do, I've usually got a student along or I'm on a dive master led tour, which limits the amount of time I really have to focus on photography. Uh, so over a couple of years ago, I began hearing things about the TG5 and now the TG6, which I've got with the Olympus housing just about a year ago. Uh, because of the limited diving that I do, I was interested in having something good enough and convenient to take on a plane, but didn't really have to invest a whole lot of time in managing the system. And I know there are probably uh, similar folks out there who might be interested in this camera, so I thought I'd do a little video on it. Now this is not a pro instructional type video. These are my thoughts on the point and shoot simplicity of this camera. If you really want to dig into the various settings, lens choices, lights and strobes, uh, you can go find that kind of information at uh, websites for groups like Backscatter. There's some really knowledgeable folks over there. So I'm going to be talking about this system essentially out of the box with no lights or strobes. So let's dig in. So I've been in the water twice with this system. Last year I was down in Crystal River snorkeling with manatees and then I recently just got back from a day of diving on Molasses Reef in Key Largo. So let me go over the components I've got in my system again. This is bare bones. So the TG6 camera, it's a 4K point and shoot. It's widely regarded um, as packing a lot of power in a small package. It does shoot 4K video. It's got autofocus. It has some interesting presets for auto white balancing and the camera itself is waterproof to 50 feet. I chose to package it with the Olympus housing, which is this. It's like many small point and shoot housings um, that are on the market. So it was sealed from being on the plane. The camera just fits right in. It's got all the controls here on the back. It's got a nice thumb rest actually so you can handle it pretty conveniently. I put it on a homemade tray that I dive with. It also has a diffuser for the flash. This becomes inoperable if you're using one of the add-on lenses, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, and there's, of course, a viewfinder on the back. I chose the air lens from Backscatter because it'll shoot underwater and above water. It looks like this. And it simply just screws onto the front of the house and you can see how it will obstruct the uh, the flash diffuser there. There it goes. There's three attachment points for quarter inch uh, tripod mounts or, or tray mounts there. So that's what it looks like with the air lens on it. And this is, this is what I use for the video uh, examples you're going to see in a moment. All right, so let's take a look at what we did with the manatees. Um, obviously, it's a shallow water because we're snorkeling. Um, it was an overcast day. Again, no strobe. It had the air lens on it that I just showed you. And here's an example of one of the pictures that we took. And I'm just going to go through and look at some of these. Let's look at some of the footage. And I shot this in 4K. Let's see. You can see this really outstanding sharpness in the picture. Um, and there's actually an example of how the air lens works above water and below water. One of the traits or the advantages of the TG6 that people really rave about is the uh, the ability to shoot macro with it, and there's a setting called 
microscope, which has very accurate autofocus and s super sharpness. Um, this is just using the, the 4K video settings and um, the auto white balance. There's a preset for being in the water. It's got a little fish. It's basically an underwater preset. That's what I've got here for the white balance. Um, and again, this is just point and shoot. Just kind of use the settings that uh, that that they recommend, and um, and going with it. So here we're getting pretty close to this manatee. And really, you can see how it excels um, at, in super close quarters. It's not really super wide field. It's kind of an intermediate wide field. Um, but I think it's a nice compromise between you know getting close to an object and reducing the amount of uh, sediment and stuff in the water that's going to um, affect your image quality. And again, this is unedited. This is just one, one video clip. It's kind of a busy day there with the manatees, really. All right. So let's move on to some of the footage at depth from the keys. Okay, so this first clip will give you a good idea of uh, how the autofocus responds on the camera. I'm kind of coming over a little coral head here and you'll see it struggle a little bit to um, to come into focus. But there you are. I don't think this is 4K video. video. I think this is high def. So 1080p. Again, no video lights. This is in about 35 feet of water. Um, completely overcast day. It was very cloudy, actually. So let's move on. This is a photo. You can switch right back and forth between shooting video and shooting photos. So you can see, um, at least compared to you know old film point-and-shoot cameras, and even the GoPro, um, color is really quite good with no lights once you get close enough I noticed that with the auto with the auto white balancing if you are a you know a bit far off it all remains kind of hazy and kind of gray but there was a definite point and you should see it on some video here in a moment where it was picking up enough data that the auto balance could come in and, and you're looking at these these snapper um, color looks pretty good actually in fact, the the way the auto balance, auto white balancing works, it almost looks like there's a light, a video light on it, but there's not. So let's see what this one is. Oh, here you go. It's the same group of fish, but this time with video. And you should see as we get closer here, how the colors seem to kind of pop a little bit. Like right there. Let's see what else we have. So here's people underwater. These are my kids. And then let's find one more reef shot. Yeah, I think this one's good. I was able to get pretty close on this so you can again see that when you get close to the subject um, it's very sharp colors look pretty decent you know the TG6 isn't the, the the least expensive option out there with the housing and the air lens it's you know it's, it's under a thousand dollars I think but so it's still a sizable investment but I think you know, if you want quality images and quality video without spending, 
you know, five, six, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars on a system, the TG6 is an interesting option. So we'll pick one more to finish up with. And let's see, I think this one's pretty good. Yes, yeah, so you can see the surface there. We're pretty close to some of the some of the coral. Gets gets a pretty good idea of what it looks far off. Um, so there's definitely a range you want to stay in so the colors don't get washed out. So there you have it, my thoughts on the TG6 as a simple point and shoot solution. If you're not interested in all the overhead of a more professional system or don't have that much money to invest or maybe you just want to grab some pics and video along the way on your dives, I think the TG6 is a viable option. I'm personally looking forward to experimenting more with the macro functions and I do plan on adding strobes and lights in the future so maybe we'll get back and revisit all that. Um, but in the meantime, I hope the video was instructive. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to ask any questions, please feel free to email me at theamazingocean.com or drop a comment below. Like everyone says on YouTube, please subscribe and give us a like. Thanks for watching.